Hello, welcome back to my channel, Family Tech. I'm so excited you're here. Definitely, please subscribe to my channel. I publish every Thursday and I give you all of the tech tips and advice that you did not even know you needed. Uh, I don't concentrate on a lot of speeds and feeds that other technology channels concentrate on. I want to help you manage your family and manage the technology that is in your home. Today's topic is one that people ask all the time, all the time. You've been begging, begging, begging for this topic. I'm finally giving in. I'm not really an Apple user, so uh, it pained me to do this video today, but I'm here for you. I want to help you guys understand and manage the technology in your home, and unfortunately, some of that is Apple devices. So today's topic, I'm going to go through everything you need to know about setting up an iPhone for your kid. So you're buying your kid their very first iPhone against my recommendations, but it happens. I totally understand. I still want to help you set it up to the best of its ability. Um, at the end of the video, I will go into why exactly I don't recommend iOS devices for kids. Um, as they get older, definitely you can get them an iOS device. I would still recommend following all of these steps that I'm going to lay out in the video to make sure that they are set up for success on their technology. But we'll dig right into how to set up parental controls, how to monitor an iPhone before you give it over to your kid. Hello friends, I'm Sarah Kimmel, your friendly neighborhood tech expert. You can find me helping families with tech problems on TV news, podcasts, Instagram, Facebook, and my website, familytechzone.com. All right, welcome back. Like I said, we're going to go over everything you need to do to set up a new iPhone, or if they already have an iPhone, take it back from them and reset it up with these instructions, and you will be able to manage and monitor it to the best of iOS's ability. So the first step on the list is actually picking up a second iPhone. So here's the problem with iOS devices. They are built for privacy, and even if that's the privacy of a 10-year-old. Like I said at the end of the video, I am going to go into other reasons why it's not a great idea to get an iOS device for your kid. But if you're here, you've already bought it, you've gone down the rabbit hole, Oh well, let's help you get it set up properly. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is get a second iPhone, which is a really big pain, but it is really going to give you the best tools to manage that iPhone. And especially, especially if you use an Android device, this is going to really help you manage the iPhone that you have purchased for your child. If you have an iPhone and your child has an Android, there is nothing different you need to do. All of the apps are available on iOS so that you can manage and maintain those devices that are Android devices. The opposite is not true. If you have an Android and your child has an iPhone, you are going to get into a lot of trouble trying to manage and maintain that device. So what I recommend, hopping on the classifieds, buying a older used iPhone. Um, I think iPhone 7 is probably the lowest that you're going to wanna go because it does still need to get iOS updates. So you don't want to go much lower than that because you get into the point where they're not getting iOS updates anymore. So the secondary device needs to be another iPhone. Even if you have an iPhone that you use, I also recommend setting up a secondary device. We'll get into why in just a minute, but um, having this secondary device for each iPhone that you're going to want to manage and control. But yeah, so go on to the classifieds, Pick up an additional iPhone for each iPhone that you've already purchased that does have service. It does not need to have service. You just need to run it off the Wi-Fi. Um, it can pick up everything just fine without service. So go ahead and hop on the classifieds. You could even get one with a cracked screen, anything. You really don't need this device to be very special. So, you know, have a nice, newer iPhone for your kid, get an older, um, you know, maybe damaged one for your monitoring device. So that is step one, getting a second iPhone for each iPhone that you are going to manage and control. The second step is to set up 
family sharing. Now, a lot of people will sign into their own iCloud account on their child's device. I highly recommend against that. You're going to want to go into family sharing and set up an account for each child that has an iPhone. And this is how you set up family sharing. To set up family sharing, tap settings, tap your account, and tap family sharing. Add member. If your child already has an Apple ID, you're going to tap invite people. If they do not, tap create an account for a child. Go ahead and continue. It's going to ask you details to create this child's account. You're going to have to put in the security code of the credit card information that is on your Apple ID. It's going to give you a warning about creating an account for a child who is over the age of 13. If your child is over the age of 13, it's not going to let you create an account through this method. You're going to have to do the other method by creating their Apple ID first and going back and inviting them. So this is only valid for children who are under the age of 13 years old. Go ahead and click continue. You'll have to agree to the privacy disclosure. And then you're going to enter your child's birthday won't let you add a child whose birthday is over the age of 13. It's going to ask for an email address, so make sure you've got an email account already set up for them. If you don't have an email address for your child, you can say don't have an email address and get an iCloud email address. Then it's going to have you create a password, and then it's going to have a verification code, and you can send that verification code to your phone number. Then I'll have you agree to some more terms and conditions and give you some default settings. And now they are listed under your account. Once they are listed here in Family Sharing, scroll down to the screen time. They should also be listed here. And you can turn on screen time. And then this will walk you through all of the different screen time settings that you can set. And now you're all set up. To set up Family Sharing for someone who already has an iCloud account, or an Apple ID, tap add member, click invite people, and you can send them a text message, email them, or airdrop the invitation to them. Once they click on that invitation, it'll ask them a few questions and they will be added here. Once they're here, you can go into screen time and set up their different screen time settings. Step three in iPhone monitoring is to set up the mirroring. This is when you're going to use your second device. So go ahead and grab that second device, grab the device that you are handing over to your child, and let's set up mirroring. To set up text message mirroring, you need to have the monitored device and the monitoring device. On the monitor device, go into settings and first check to make sure you are using the same iCloud account on both devices. Go to the monitor device and tap iCloud. Go to the messages and make sure it is toggled on. On the monitor device, Go back to the settings and scroll down until you see messages. Tap on send receive and make sure only the phone number is checkmarked. Do not checkmark both, just the phone number. Then go back and make sure text message forwarding is also toggled on. On the monitoring device, Go down to iCloud and make sure messages is toggled off on iCloud. Go back to the settings, scroll down to messages, go to send and receive and make sure the phone number of the monitored device is checkmarked. That's it. Now all of your messages should be mirrored. 
Now that you have mirroring all set up and ready to go, you are going to be able to see all of the text messages that are coming through to your child's device on your monitoring device. Even if they delete the messages on their device, they are still gonna come through on your mirroring device. So that's gonna give you a really good window into the messages that your teen is sending and receiving. Step four, I recommend setting up a third party monitoring tool like Bark or Our Pact. Now the problem with a third party monitoring system, like I said, Apple is very concerned about privacy, even if it's the privacy of a 10 year old. I'm gonna say that over and over and over again. So it's very difficult to monitor content going on inside an iPhone. So when you set up a third party monitoring platform, generally they aren't allowed to install anything or run anything on the iPhone itself just because of these privacy restrictions. So what happens is you usually have to have a computer. So for Bark, you're going to have to set up a computer with the Bark program and then the only way it's actually monitoring content is when the device connects back up to your Wi-Fi. So if your child goes away and sends messages, deletes those messages before they get home and connect with the Wi-Fi, you are never going to see those messages. So it's important that you set up you know, the mirroring like we set up in the last step. And it's just important that you understand that you may not see everything that happens because of these limitations. So and you know, if they're gone for an entire weekend, you won't get notified of anything that's going on during that weekend because you won't be notified until the device connects back up to your your Wi-Fi at the house um, because what it does is on Wi-Fi it runs a backup to the computer and the monitoring program actually monitors the backup so if the phone is away or the backups aren't running or something goes wrong you aren't going to get those notifications but what I like about bark instead of just relying on the mirroring is a it's gonna handle some social media it doesn't handle everything that it can on an Android device but it does handle some, but also you're not going to have to go through, you know, kids text a lot. I don't know if you know this about kids, but they text a lot. And if you don't want to have to go through all of those text messages, I mean, it would be like having a second job to go through all those messages. A program like Bark will just alert you if anything concerning comes up. And when you do see something concerning, then you can go back through the mirroring device and get some more context because it's only going to show you a brief snippet of what that conversation was about. And so if it's going to alert you on something, then you want to go back and make sure that, you know, it really wasn't concerning or maybe it is concerning and you want to get further context into what's going on. So having those both together really is helpful because Bark's going to alert you that something was concerning and then you can go into the mirroring and check out, you know, go dive deeper into what was concerning and figure that out. Step five would be to also set up limits through your carrier and through your Wi-Fi. I've talked a lot about layers of parental controls and so this is just covering that additional layer. Um, the on-device layer is going to be covered with family sharing and screen time. Then the other layers are going to be just in-app protections. And now we're talking about Wi-Fi and data. So if you have something like Verizon, Verizon has a smart family where you can shut down their data access at a certain time every single night. So the internet goes to bed on the data plan. It also, you can set it on your Wi-Fi to go to bed at a certain time as well so that they're not on the internet and not on social media all hours of the night. Um, very important, I feel like teens should get their sleep. So um, set up anything through your carrier. You know, if you have T-Mobile or Sprint or AT&T, they all have different kinds of family safety. So make sure you work with them and figure out exactly what kind of family safety features they have and if you can shut off their data plan at a certain time every night. What I really like about the Verizon's family safety is I can still text and call my daughter even when her data plan is shut off at a specific time. So when she's out later than her data plan allows, then I am still able to contact her through those other means because the Verizon family sharing lets me have specific contacts that can still contact her even when things are shut down at night. That's gonna be your fifth 
step. So make sure you've got all of those steps covered and you are ready to hand over that iPhone to your child and feel a little bit more confident that it's going to be protected for them. Uh, I did promise a few more reasons why iPhones aren't the best idea for teenagers. I already laid out one is you do need to have another iPhone in order to manage that screen time. There is no setting for Android for screen time. So if you don't have an iPhone to monitor or manage that device, it's going to be very, very difficult for you. So, you know, get that secondary device that is the mirroring device. The problem with the mirroring device is it's going to have the same iCloud account as your child's iPhone. So you can't set up any of the um, screen time management or app approvals or anything like that because it's going to need to be on a parent's iCloud account. So you can't use that mirroring device to manage and control the time limits on the device. So you do need to have another iPhone that you can set up the different management because you'll need your parent iCloud account signed into that device. So it's going to be very difficult if you have an Android and your child has an iOS device. In those situations, I honestly just recommend you get yourself an iOS device and then it's going to be a lot easier to manage and maintain, um, unfortunately, because I am a huge Android user. Another limitation on screen time is once you approve an app, you can't take it back. So if they've downloaded Instagram and then you've decided, you know what, they're not responsible enough for Instagram, I need to take that away and you uninstall it, they can install it at any time because they've already installed it and it's already been approved. They just re-download it and it doesn't ask you again if they can re-download it. They're just able to re-download it and it's not going to notify you that they've reinstalled that application. Um, I, I assume Apple knows that this is a problem. It is a big problem that you can't take back an approval um, and I think it's something they need to fix, but at this time you can't take back that approval and so that's another reason I really don't like iPhones for kids. Something else that's wrong with getting your child an iPhone is updates. So whenever iOS updates, it seems like it breaks screen time almost every single time. You have to make sure all devices that are using the family sharing are on the exact same iOS version, and that's even incremental updates and big updates. And then sometimes when there is a big operating system update, so it goes from iOS 13 to iOS 14, Sometimes it breaks screen time altogether and it doesn't notify you that screen time's not working. Just you go in and look at it and nothing's been recorded for the last week or so. And you're like, oh my goodness, like how did everything break? You know, it's not notifying you that everything is broken. It just breaks. That's a big issue I have with these iOS updates is that it breaks screen time. And you know, you would think this would be an important feature for parents and it's clear that Apple does not put very much priority on this feature. The final reason I don't like iOS for kids is that it does not play nice with third-party software. I mentioned it a little bit ago, you know, Apple's so concerned about privacy, even if it's the privacy of a 10-year-old, and they don't play nice with third-party parental control applications. So screen time is very, very limited in what it can do, and it has zero window into monitoring content on the device. So your kid can be doing things in Instagram and you would never know about it or your, your messages, you don't get notified. So screen time is very limited, but they also don't play nice with third-party applications. So you can't augment the limitations of screen time with a third-party application without jumping through a bunch of hoops. So that's the last reason I don't like iOS for kids, but you're the parent, you can do whatever you want. Uh, I can just give you the recommendations and help you manage what choices that you have already made. So um, hopefully this has been a little bit helpful for you, getting this device all set up so that you can hand it over with a little more confidence. Um, not as much confidence as you'd have if they had an Android, but I digress. I'm not judging you for giving your teen an iPhone, maybe a little bit, but I'm okay.
Uh, I just really want parents to understand those limitations, understand what they're getting into, and be able to manage and maintain it properly. So definitely subscribe. I, as I mentioned, I publish every Thursday. I am trying to go live every Thursday as well. Sometimes it's not going to work out, but we will see. I'm going to try and keep that up for a little while. Um, I love subscriptions though. I really want to help parents understand and manage the technology in their home. Hit me up on Instagram if you have any questions. I answer DMs frequently on Instagram. I'm just at Family Tech on all social media platforms. So hit me up there and we will see you next Thursday. Mm -hmm.